all right so in this this is for tuesday but like i told you guys prior a lot of these videos for this week is pre-recorded mostly all of them as we transition to our june theme okay guys so just finishing um scrolling with this theme in this in this month so we can go into uh, the new and then you guys and god is so good i've seen him move tremendously this month and just over my life and over the times and seasons and i'm sure many of you have and it's just amazing and you know he's not done yet so i'm excited about what god is doing not just in my life but in the life of um god's righteous children you know so let's get into so for this video we're going to be doing for bible study revisiting ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 and we're also going to revisit romans chapter 7 but we're going to read ecclesiastes first and you guys know what these videos either we're praying in the videos or um i'm leaving them below in the description box i am out guys um running some errands doing laundry and all that good stuff so it is a little dark because of how i'm parking everything but i gotta just get the word out amen you guys so ecclesiastes 3 is talking about a time for everything excuse uh you know the traffic this is a busy area a time for everything but we're just going to look at the first eight verses there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal and even as we are uh, revisiting this and studying this together again guys what season of life would you say that you're in right now not what you was in or not what you're getting ready to go into or you believe in god for but what season and time would you say you're in now based off of us reading this so while i ask you that let me go back there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them a time to embrace and a time to refrain a time to search and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to mend a time to be silent and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace and it continues on we have like uh 22 verses we do have a ecclesiastes series a lot of these we have full bible in-depth teachings and studies on them but even as we were doing bible study guys for that that ecclesiastes 3 1 through 8 what season and time of your life would you say that you're in you know like what season and time of life would you say you're in uh spiritually or physically or financially or your relationships or like in, in the air of your soul like what season of era are you in when it comes to like ministry and purpose and like your business and job and career what season of life and what time and season would you say that you're in personally okay so that's ecclesiastes 3 1 through 8 we're going to move on now to romans 7 we're going to revisit this you guys know for the month of may all of this was written out earlier for the month of may all this was written out for the month of may. i'm sorry guys i'm looking like this it's just a lot of activity around here but um you know how people think that they, they don't see i'm recording and they think i'm looking at them okay so anyways guys um all of this was already written out i just have to you know it's been consistent with getting it out so i thank god guys that these bible studies are a blessing to me too but romans 7 is talking about an illustration from marriage and struggling with sin we're going to read all of this it's about 25 verses or so give me some water y'all all right let's start with the illustration from marriage first which is the first six verses of this chapter this is apostle paul talking to the church at rome because in six he's talking about dead to sin alive in christ and slave to righteousness we do have a roman series so we've read all of this but seven an illustration from marriage do you not know brothers for i'm speaking to men who know the law that the law has authority over a man only as long as he lives 
For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. And I have given you guys multiple videos about that, what is saying in context, and other cross reference scriptures that goes with that. So I'm not breaking that down today either. I'm going to continue to read. And I also want to continue to encourage you, you. Like, if this is your first video or two watching and you're not used to like the Bible studies, and because I'm big on the word, go back and get it, please. Um, you know in, in in context okay so let's keep reading so then if she marries another man while her husband is still alive she is called an adulteress but if her husband dies she is released from that law and is not an adulteress even though she marries another man he was basically giving them this example for a reason and there's cross reference scriptures that goes with this also okay but let's just keep reading he was just given an illustration from marriage about it okay so my brothers you also died to the law through the body of Christ that you might belong to another to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit to God. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature or the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our body so that we bore fruit for death. But now by doing, by dying, excuse me, but now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code so let's talk about struggling with sin what shall we say then is the law sin certainly not indeed i would not have known what sin was except through the law for i would not have known what coveting really was if the law had said do not covet and that's found in exodus 20 verse 17 and also deuteronomy 5 21 but sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of covetous desire. For apart from law, sin is dead. Once I was alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, well, verse 11, for you follow along with me on your device or your, in your Bible. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment put me to death. And you got to understand Apostle Paul's history, how he was a zealot and like a um, chief, I believe, Pharisee of Pharisees. And uh, he was like zealous for the law, zealous for all those things. He used to persecute the Christians. We have an entire series on Apostle Paul and read so much of what he, so many of his letters of what he wrote and studied his life and things. So... God really transformed and changed his man's life. So if anyone can tell you, you know, about this, it is him. He is certified. He is uh, qualified to do this because of Christ, but not because of his own righteousness, which he found. You know, so that's, I just love these um, letters because it's like, he definitely qualified for it. And a lot of times, just like people say, God does not call the qualified. Because we'll be honest, none of us is qualified. None of us are qualified. Only Christ is qualified. He don't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And God wants us to continue to daily be um, strengthened in needing him and longing for him and um, in need of his, his grace and his mercy and his strength and depending on him. Never feeling like we got this thing because whenever you feel like, oh, I got this or I'm good or there's nothing more to learn or grow or go to another level, that's where the enemy have you. In fact, he have you before you get to that place. So you don't want to be in that place. I'm not saying that for everybody, but that's for somebody. Always want to go and grow, right? Always want to go to another level in the Lord. Always want to go to another level in life. Always want to grow. Always want to learn. Don't always feel like you know everything. Don't feel like you're perfect. Don't feel like you're better than nobody. Don't feel like, oh, because I do this and I do that and they don't do this or do that or they don't got that and they got that, that you're better than everybody. Because the poorest people are not the people that lack natural resources or opportunities or resources. The poorest people are the people whose conscience are seared to me. Who your, your conscience is seared, you're prideful, you're egotistical, you know, you don't even realize that you are deceived. That's a poor person to me. Because your material possessions, yes, those are blessings, but they can't save you. Character sustains you. Dignity, integrity, those things speak loud when you have things and when you don't. The way you treat people. So it's not about what you have that makes you rich because we see so many people that have, um, 
see so many people that have different possessions, but they got to spend what they have to take care of the health. Or when all those things crumble, and I'm not saying this for everybody, I'm just, just painting this picture for somebody, whoever it is. It ain't for everybody, I assure you. You know, and then they got to spend that for the health. We talked about that before. They got to spend that for all that wealth for the health. You know, you see so many people, and I'm not going to say so many people. You see some people, in some instances, that they had these big titles and these big things and all these things. And that's great because God wants us to be blessed in all areas of our life. We serve a big God according to Ephesians 3, 19 to 20. But the problem lies when those things possess us and we worship the created things more than the creator. That's a grave problem. And you see that these people had these titles and these different things and all these things. But when they die, a lot of people don't come to their funeral. You know, and some people feel like, well, you know, they're not missed at all when they're gone. That's sad to say, but, you know, and, you know, you see where maybe they have these things acquired over in this area with finances or property or wealth or accounts or land or different type of investments and different things. But maybe their children don't get along or their children or family despise them or maybe they marriage. You see, so it's so many different, different things that goes with this. So real riches is having father god having jesus christ as your lord and savior to me to me coming from a person that when i was not saved was big into materialism and i i genuinely felt like when i was not saved that because i was a good person because i um tithe because i blessed god's church and because i was a good person and i helped people and i was kind to of people that that automatically qualified me high to go to heaven and i, I would have been going i would have been going straight to hell because it's not about words. And when God would send people and angels to minister to me, he would give me those different scriptures. It's not about works so that no man can boast. It, it is by grace through faith. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So riches is about your character. To me, riches is about your character. Riches is real peace and joy in Christ. Riches is how you treat people. Riches is your relationship with the Lord, you know, and those things will be added. Them other things will be added. Being blessed in an abundance in your finances and in your business and dreams and goals, you know, and in your career and, and ministry and all those different things and in your life and just your soul and just being free and all those different things and so many other different things that I'm not naming, but that's true riches to me. I don't even know how we got there, guys. Let's get back to the word, but... That's true riches to me because even Apostle Paul said in one of his letters, he said, I consider all of these things rubbish. Rubbish is like trash. It's, it's crap. It's meaningless. He said, I consider all these things rubbish, foolishness to gain Christ. To gain Christ. That is the true prize because there are going to be so many people in hell what, what, what is their name or their fame or their title on earth or their different things that they had going to do to save them from the torment and the suffering and the agony of a Christless hell eternally condemned and damned forever? What That's not about nothing. I'd rather have the Lord and have those things in this life and in the life to come than not have it in this life and not have it in the life to come and don't have him. That's true richness to me. True riches to me is love. Yes, God wants us to be rich and blessed in context when they don't have a whole of us. And he wants us to be blessed and blessed and shower his children. What good father or parent don't want their child to be blessed? I'm, I'm, I want my son to constantly be blessed, but I do it in balance. I give him what I know it can't handle. I, I, it, it brings me joy to see my son light up when I take him to the park or we take him to the park or he go to Chuck E. Cheese or he, we get to go to a family event or he get to just go have fun or pick out things he, you know, he want or being rewarded for school or just we going out to eat where you want to go. And, you know, it, it brings me so much joy. It brings me joy to see my son. Have, you know, it brings me joy. So it's constant levels to it, you know, so it brings the father joy to bless you with those things. But he never wanted to be where you worshiping those things more than him. That's where we're getting into adultery and adultery. And that's why so many people is jacked up right now. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know how we got there, but thank you, Lord. Let's get back. 
Okay, let's go back to eight. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, producing me every kind of covetous desire. I know we read it. I think we read 11 also, but let's just go back a few verses up if you don't mind, okay? Okay, for apart from law, sin is dead. Once I was alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment deceived me and through the commandment put me to death so then the law is holy and the commandment is holy righteous and good did that which is good then become death to me by no means but in order that sin might be recognized as sin it produced death in me through what was good so that through the commandment sin might become utterly simple and let me quickly just pause before we close this video out the verses 14 through 24 you know when you're talking about in context okay so it's like this for someone don't feel like your own uh, righteousness and legalism is, is greater than the blood of jesus christ because then you're thinking like a pharisee or a sadducee you know you need jesus like his blood and his power and his redemption his death burial and resurrection is what is, is what allows you to be a Christian. It's what allows you to be reconciled back to God. It's what allows you to, to go to heaven. It's what allows you to walk in your full destiny, its purpose. It's what allows you to be saved. It's not your works. No, it's not your works. It's not your keeping. It's not your holiness. It's God's holiness. It's his Holy Spirit. It's his blood. It's his, it's his sanctification process in you. Never feel like you've arrived. Please help yourself and don't do that. Never feel, never never feel like it's because of you never feel like it's your own righteousness because let me tell you what the bible said our own righteousness is as a filthy rag before him amen yes god will credit you and honor you and it's good to say yeah i want to do my best to live a holy and pleasing lifestyle to god is not perfect don't never feel like this is what i'm saying for somebody i'm hearing this for somebody don't feel like you're the perfection don't feel like you're the sanctification don't feel like you're the glory. Don't feel like you're the best thing since sliced bread. And allow that to uh, dictate how you treat people. Or have a Pharisee, Sadducee um, mindset. Because we have so many videos talking about Jesus and them. And the difference. Because there's a difference. Jesus Christ did not die for religion. Because the religious people was against him and wanted him dead. He did not die for religion. He died for a relationship. He died for a redemption. He died for reconciliation and much more. Amen. So don't never feel always like point it back to God. Don't ever point it to you because it ain't you. Because if you could have saved yourself, you would. You know, you're dealing with some things right now that you still can't save yourself from. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the grace of God. It's the glory be to God. It's the word of God. So it's got to point back to him. You understand what I'm saying? You know, don't never feel like it's you. And that's not taking away from you wanting to live for God. And this ain't for everybody, but I, I, this for somebody. I'm just being obedient, okay? I don't know who. You know, don't never feel like it's you. Always point it back to the Lord. Always say it is the, the grace of God. It's the glory of God. It is God's hand on my life because of this. It is God's strength. It is God's anointing. It is it is God's um no, breaking yoke power. It is the Lord. Amen. Amen. That, you you got you to point it back to the Lord. You got to point it back to him. That's a word for somebody. You got to point it back to him, you guys. Amen. So, we know that the law is spiritual. This is verse 14 closing out. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And another thing, like... Let's say you are um, getting up going to church, or you are feeding the homeless, or you are doing all these great things, but you have hate in your heart, and you're a bitter person, and you're mean, and you're nasty, and your heart is ugly, and you don't love people. I really would like you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it's no shade, I'm saying this in love. The love chapter, and we've read it. Because he was, Apostle Paul was talking to the church at Corinth saying, if you do all them things, like if you give your body to be burned but have not love, you just a clanging symbol. Love is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But do you know that love is greater than faith? Do you know that Jesus said in the book of John, love, I'm giving you a new commandment, love one another. 
if you love God, you obey his commandments. You obey his instructions, what he gives you to do. We did a John series. Love. Love. John 3, 16 through 17. God so loved the world that he sent his only son to die for us, not to condemn us, but to save us. And it continues on with some other things. So look at your heart and look at how your love, how your love is flowing. Because God is a God of love. God is a God of judgment too, but he's a God of love ultimately. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God of repentance. He have a heart for love. He is a God of love because he is love. So you cannot be talking about you serve God and you don't have a heart of love. You're a religion. No. Please. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to be praying for you, whoever that is. So we know that the law, but I hope the scriptures is helping. Amen. But let's close out. We know that the law is spiritual, but I'm unspiritual. Soul as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And also keep in mind, the seeds we sow will be returned back to us. In any capacity, any context, any era of life, whatever you sow, you reap that is Bible. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. That's in like Galatians 6. Luke 6 talks about a tree. I believe a tree and its fruit and also um, what you sow is going to come back. In the same measure you show, press down, shaking together, running over. So you need to think, and we've talked about this before, brother, sister, whoever this is. We've talked about this multiple times before. Think. What I'm sowing, even though I'm not seeing it back yet, is this something that I would want to see in my present? Is this something that I would want to see return back to me in my future? And we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. We're, we're human. But to deliberately and intentionally, I want you to consciously think about that. Don't make everything so deep and spiritual. You know, because we are spiritual beings, but everything is not deep and spiritual. God gives us common sense. He gives us a physical body. He gives us a soul. He gives us things in balance for a reason. You know, so I really want you to just um, please read that 1 Corinthians 13 and, you know, think about that. The way that you treated people, is it okay for people to treat you that way? The seeds that you've sown to people in any context, time, encouragement, finances, um, your speech, your character, your words. Would you want somebody doing that back to you? This is something that we need to daily reflect on. And when we miss the mark, repent. Say, God, help me to be better. Because when you don't, you're going to find yourself going through the same tests and things until you pass, until you get it. Okay? So, um, let's just close. Okay. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in the, my sinful nature or in the flesh. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me or evil is present. Right, you guys? For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? I love how he gave him the glory. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. And of course, he talks about in Romans chapter eight, life through the spirit future glory more than conquerors and some other things amen but i pray you guys was blessed amen and guys again the lightning it looks super dark because of how i'm part but i pray you guys was blessed to god be all the glory amen 